Peter Dutton says it's the solution to lower power prices. The Prime Minister says it's a nuclear fantasy. The coalition's plan to build seven nuclear reactors is so far uncosted, but Shadow Energy Minister Ted O'Brien says it can be delivered for a fraction of the cost of Labor's renewables rollout and has guaranteed there will be no cost blowouts. Mr O'Brien has also moved to reassure spooked clean energy investors, saying renewables will play an important but different role. Ted O'Brien joined me from Canberra. Ted O'Brien, welcome to the business. Great to be with you. In the past week, our program, The Business, has spoken to the peak clean energy bodies. They all say the nuclear proposal is going to see investors looking for a safer place to put their money than Australia. That must be a concern. Well, I recognise that if you are a, an investor, um, you want to make as much money as you can. That's fine. I'm a liberal. I, I'm a capitalist. I get that. I respect that. But when it comes to to public policy, our approach isn't to put the investors at the centre. It is to put the consumer, the household, to put the businesses of Australia at the centre. So we need to take a total system cost approach to say what is the cheapest way that we can reach net zero. Now, as we lay out our plan and we say that we don't want a 98% renewables grid, we want a balanced mix, I understand that big investors in renewables will say, well, hang on, the more the better. But from our perspective, the goal should not be to have the maximum amount of renewables on our grid, but the optimum amount. Why is the coalition traditionally a champion of small government, spruiking one of the biggest government funded investment programs in Australian history? Firstly, we are dealing with a system that is fundamentally broken. And as a Liberal, um, we recognise the need for government to come in when you are dealing with a system that's broken. Secondly, government ownership of large nuclear power plants has been the proven formula around the world to work best. It's, if you look at Europe, probably the, the most successful nuclear power is France. Uh, their plants, government owned. In our own region, we see South Korea probably leading the pack right now, government owned. Um, as we look to our future and we say we need that balanced energy mix on nuclear, learn from best practice and we do believe they should be government owned assets. Well, you haven't put out costings, uh, but this is going to be expensive, no doubt. Do you envisage having to raise tax or debt to fund it? Oh, look, uh, we will come forward with our full economic plan in due course. Um, we, we have said before, I mean, it will be a series of plants are run by a GBE, a government business enterprise. Um, Affordable Energy Australia will be its name. Um, we expect a positive return. Um, it will be uh, off budget um, and by extension, therefore, it has to deliver a positive return. So you won't need to raise taxes to fund this program? Uh, again, we'll provide more information about the financing um, um, options. Um, available to us, but you can assume a mix of debt and equity for the GBE. Now, market operator AEMO's roadmap came out yesterday saying the speed up of renewables needs to occur to support the shortfall from declining coal. Do you support that plan? No, and that is because um, every single one of the uh, operator's scenarios assumes that the government's 82 per cent renewables target by 2030 is achieved. But I struggle to find any serious market analyst who thinks that's possible. Right now, the government's running at about one third of the pace they should to achieve the 82% renewable target. They're not going to achieve it. And so I'm deeply concerned that the market operators scenarios all assume that target will be reached. And by the way, um, it's not a criticism of the market operator. In fairness, according to the law, they, they must assume uh, the government's targets. And, and this puts us in an awful predicament as an economy. The government has set unrealistic targets. They're not going to achieve them. But now the market operator has to model them as if they are true. And I think that is sending a very dangerous signal to the marketplace. You mentioned the overseas experience. We have seen cost blowouts uh, in many of the 
overseas reactor projects. Can you promise there won't be cost blowouts at your projects? The key thing is to ensure that you're learning the lessons right across the board, right? Um, and again, when we come out with our economics, um, you'll see that we've been quite conservative with this, so we don't envisage any cost blowouts at all. Um, it's very easy whether you look at wind projects, solar projects, gas projects, coal projects, nuclear projects. Um, you can always find examples where projects um, have run into trouble. Um, you know, people criticise wind projects because Siemens, probably the, the biggest uh, developer of wind turbines, um, you know, it sought a 16 billion euro bailout um, from the German government. Um, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't do wind. Um, if you look at Snowy 2.0, the cost of that in Australia has doubled over the last two years. You know, you don't conclude, well, we better not do hydro. Um, you know, similarly, you don't look at cherry picking examples of a nuclear project elsewhere and go, oh, well, that one blew out, therefore you, you don't do nuclear. You've got to learn the lessons. And we have learnt a lot of those lessons. And that's why I've been doing this, this policy work methodically, uh, to make sure that we learn from the good and the bad to say, OK, lessons learnt, these are the principles we must apply in the Australian context. We've done that and that's reflected in the policies we're now rolling out. Ted O'Brien, thank you.